friends i welcome you to another episode with mr doubt um if you if you do not know the first episode was released one week ago you can still check it 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 it, it will appear here and uh, it it was a very interesting episode and mr doubt talked about his life about his story and today he is going to tell us about his startup his purpose of his life uh, about uh, hub schooling so sir welcome to the show how are you doing thank you so much aditya and hope you are doing wonderful great good health god bless yes um so viewers let's begin with the interview and please stay tuned till the end uh, because mr dawood is going to share a lot of insights and yes so sir um please tell us about your startup hub schooling right so education has been primarily the driving force in my life and education needs to change as with everything in life you know our lifestyles our, our plans to vacations uh shoppings our travels everything changes except for schools so that is where hub schooling came into picture uh, i will tell you a story in a later part uh, we we'll talk about what inspired me but hub schooling the concept is very simple instead of having huge conglomerate of schools with 3000 kids in it we start making small hubs where students are connected and they learn something that is the passion project they still learn math science english uh, the languages but they also learn what they excited about it could be life skills it could be entrepreneurship it could be social entrepreneurship the sdgs the sustainable goals that is where the hub schooling comes into picture the name i've given to my startup is golden sparrow hub schooling and when you think of golden sparrow you know if you loosely translate it it is sone ki chidiya and i am a big history buff i love the i'm nostalgic about what we have achieved in the past we need to bring those emotions back so i call the hub schooling the golden sparrow hub schooling is the new gurukul that is online and of course yes, the sir. hybrid model also yes sir that's that's really interesting sir um uh, so as you as you mentioned before the passion project i i i have seen your website Uh, by the way viewers it's in the description below check out golden sparrows uh, or hub schooling's website and yeah you will understand uh, a little bit more about it and you can contact mr daud for further information but going forward sir uh, you mentioned uh, like something called passion project before and on your website right. also it's written that hub schooling prepares the children for the real world so how does it do that um okay i think i think you are the perfect example aditya of how it could work on evolve i see your skills multi talented you know you are a wonderful entrepreneur you are uh, you know are an interviewer your editing skills are wonderful your questioning skills are very good so let's say this is your passion how do a school accelerate this passion into a program so probably you know straight from you know elens or ofras uh, courses to the most decent of coffee with karans and mandira bedis you start getting immersed into this maybe you meet them and that's what hub schooling does it reaches out to all his partners associates friends in the circle and i tell them look there is this boy aditya who loves to do uh, something in media would you connect him with someone and that is where the first step comes into it someone else could could be very excited about a different business plan so we connect them with a different entrepreneur and it could be any skill the idea is what is your passion and where do your skills have in someone uh, i have a friend uh, a young boy uh, just like your age he is a brilliant doodler and you know these uh, manga characters he is brilliant at doodling into manga characters all i need to do is we can you know connect him with with someone who's an artist aparna ma'am is a brilliant entrepreneur she is a brilliant uh, you know educator she is one who's now guiding uh, you know for him to do his doodling just a simple another idea is uh, there is there is this young girl who is very good with sustainable goals so we try to reach out to right people in japan uh, she went on board she did some some uh, webinars with them today she has been selected by the united nations world's largest lesson as an advisory panel a uh, 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 11 year old girl this is a passion not compromising on her education in math science or, or, or any other languages she can continue what she does yes sir um that is that is really interesting so uh sir for the better understanding of our audience can you uh, please assist in comparing 
a normal school with a person from the golden sparrow alumni okay all right so i believe no school is a normal school and when i mean that every school is a learning hub every school is a fertile ground for young minds to develop yes when we become too rigid that school is not an education center it is it is the idea of of a very different school that is why i call golden sparrow the unschool uh students you know can come and say that look uh, there are, there are 360 degree feedbacks not that we disrespect a teacher but there is a student assessment of a teacher how good he or she is and i i i being i i make sure i take at least one or two classes a week so i also get my feedback that sir you were not good you were boring you had no fun there was no kahoot quiz if it's online xyz that's one part of it so that's one thing that golden sparrow is different number 2 is there a lot of field trips and outing uh number 3 there are a lot of guest visits coming in so in the pandemic the last 19 months the students met somebody from mexico from nigeria from holland this wonderful lady sane she is running a green school in bali indonesia she came in as a guest there was this ambulance dada uh, who is a paramveer chakra from the you know the president of india late pranab mukherjee and he he came in and spoke he was in kbc some other time so the idea is we get lot of interactions and that is what every school should be doing today the world has changed aditya we can't be confined in the four walls and expect students to learn the world is is your internet the world is outside so let's do that okay sir um that is that is really great so many people come on to on to your uh, like play uh, on to your uh, school and give uh, so much advice and that that is really interesting um so uh how can these children make a difference in the world and become successful uh, in in their lives like from from hub schooling how does that happen right uh, you know a, a, a little deeper question uh, perhaps but how do you define success is success defined monetarily uh, is being a ceo of a company successful is driving a large big car being successful i think yes and also no if you're not happy in your relationships if you're not you know kind enough if you're not empathetic enough all of these does not matter so what i understand as as you know success for a student is let them pursue goals they would love to do remember the movie three idiot and this this uh, friend farhan uh, who was a lovely photographer and father forced in engineering that's exactly what success is not and 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 you know i got my inspiration after meeting the real funsuk wangru right so it's his name is sonong wangchu and he is the guy who was the inspiration behind amir khan's character in three idiot i met him and in iit delhi where i used to go and do a lot of programs and gone and he inspired me and i said uh, you know sonong sir how much of amir khan's character is actually you he said there's a lot of exaggeration but then he inspired me to say that whatever you do bring a difference for the child to have courage if you have the courage to pursue what you're passionate about you will be successful so yes sir yeah yes sir that that is that is really interesting and sir with that in mind uh, have you heard uh, like about startups like byju's vip kids and several other indian startups in the same space how do you think hub schooling is like uh placed with a unique proposition to add value in the same competing markets why 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 should someone go for hub schooling all right so uh, the biggest difference between byju and and golden sparrow hub schooling is they are a unicorn and we are still a zebra right so so jokes apart you know i admire byju a lot of people find it strange i think today we live not in the competition world but in collaboration world we need to understand what each other's strengths are you can't compete uh, you you don't have to compete all the time uh, that is what schools teach us unfortunately don't copy we we confuse copying with cheating and when you go to a real world they say collaborate talk to each other don't do things alone so so you see byju's is a great example of mr ravindran uh, he's taken up a concept and he's digitized it of course can there be improvement absolutely i had my uh, my entire round of interviews with byju the team in the hr some wonderful people out there and one comment i made to them after this was where is the pedagogy you know byju does lot of things for students in terms of science and technology i also believe there is equal space for humanities i call it heal h e a l 
And this is a difference that uh, Golden Sparrow brings in humanities, environment, arts, and language. One area that you know we can complement Baiju is heal. Uh, by you with all the marketing arm or the wonderful you know Shah Rukh Khan coming in or the Indian cricket team, they are telling education can be on top of many companies. It makes me very proud. Yes, sir. Um, that is that is great. So, uh, uh, can you uh, can you tell us like how does hub schooling's uh, curriculum like work? Is it different from the normal schools? uh as you said there is no normal school but the current cbse system and the icc ICS, icse system how does it differ from those standards okay uh, a lot of parameters where we try to be unique rather than different uh, among them is we ask students to select what they like uh, i always seen that one of the bone of contention is studying social studies and i say we did away with it. We said no social studies for examination. You do social studies through Google Map, Google Earth, and students are enjoying it more than that. Uh, we did away with examinations for social studies and said, fine, you don't want to learn about digging and, and doing the Harappa and the Mesopotamia, don't dig. But still enjoy being a paleontologist or, or archaeologist. That's one. Number two, languages. Uh, I studied Sanskrit, I studied Bengali. And I found that if only I had my teachers excited about it, rather than allow me to score, I would have done far better. So what we've done is we said, okay, no more languages for exams again. You only have one language, English, for the entire duration. But I'm in Maharashtra. I want my students to know Marathi. But instead of teaching it, I will have Mahesh Manjarekar's movies being played. I'll have some brilliant, you know, you should watch a movie called Sohas. It's about this young blind boy who has got, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, rectinoplasto, which is the cancer of the eye. And he has just few days before he becomes blind. He goes and sees the entire city. The kids had teary eyes when they watch a movie like that. Trust me, they love Marathi because of that. I want more theater, more drama. Anyway, you know, these young kids are already drama was. So I'll teach them drama. One very important thing that Golden Sparrow does is SDGs. We are firm believers of having the young Malala Yousafzai and Greta Thunberg as a part of every school curriculum. So we do the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. 17 goals that are from zero, you know, zero hunger, no poverty, good health, hundreds of good life on land, life underwater, climate change. So we make sure every child knows 17 goals and also does a research on either one or two of these goals. Yes, sir. Besides but, your English and maths and science. Yes, sir. But uh, is that, yeah, so that uh, researching on all these types of uh, problems that, that the world is facing at large. Sir, how do you, like, of course, researching is one thing, but how do you promote solving these problems? Of course, pro uh, that's, that's a stretch since pro solving a problem is not that easy. But uh, any example from your uh, like students who have okay. done great and maybe come up with an idea or a solution for the problem they were researching on? Okay. Uh, we always want these milestones of, you know, laurels, certificates, trophies to determine how good we are. Perhaps I go a step back and say more than solving, I want people to understand a problem. I will, you know, in, in, in your Cambridge global perspective, they say local, national and global. Sometimes we forget that local problems are more immediate, more concerning than solving a bigger problem. So in the pandemic, we saw that there was a whole rush of people concerned hoarding stuff, you know, from milk to rice to sugar to basic needs. Then we also saw that there were stray dogs that were not being fed because people are not on the road, you know, early days of pandemic. So under the whole goal of life on land, we said, why worry about the entire endangered white rhino uh, in Africa, which you will never meet? Let Rohit Shetty, uh, you know, Rohit Sharma, Indian cricketer, take care of it. He's done a brilliant job being an ambassador of the last white rhino. His name is Sudan, by the way, the rhinos. We said, can we go and feed the stray dogs? And that became my local project. Uh, I also encourage not, you know, not that you can't adopt a dog, but indie dogs, you know, our local dogs. So that became a beautiful project. It's, it did not give you any trophy. No news item came about it. But students went, made packets every day, and they went and fed these dogs, stray dogs. I felt that was a brilliant cause, real problem solving, and that is how we should all achieve it. Small goals. At one day, we will solve the world food crisis, but it starts with your neighboring stray dogs before solving the world crisis.
Yes, sir. Students have, um, you know, stopped using air conditions all the time because you talk about climate change sitting in AC rooms. How ironical can that be? Yes, sir. Um, so uh, that, that is really interesting. So as per your experience, please advise some key skills that every child should learn to prepare for future challenges and why. Some future okay. skills. Uh, future uh, i think life skills is a very integral part of golden sparrow and whatever i do uh, we also encourage doing life skill as hobby classes because sometimes it's an add on that schools don't do and to start with an easy program i have a course called bridge to success we use 10 united nations life skills so united nations and who have come up with 10 you know there are many lists but there are 10 life skills from interpersonal communication from empathy from decision making problem solving We've used these stress management, coping with emotions, and I've created workshops around it so students get to see them. And if you solve these, you will become a wonderful, you know, these are the, these are the toolkit that any young student, any young leader needs. Yes, sir. That is, uh, that is great. And life skills. So, sir, uh, sir, how, uh, like, uh, as per my knowledge, uh, a golden sparrow is an online school, right? Or an offline school? Okay, it is what we call the new hybrid model. So we are online for a lot of students, but we also have a physical model. So, you know, I always say you can't play football online. So in, in the area of Navi Mumbai, Seawoods, we have a physical school, which we call the hybrid model. So you say we are two days online and three days you know, offline, physically we meet. Every week we have a football session, we have weekend, we have outings, we went to Decathlon last week. So this is what we do. And wherever there are online sessions in Kolkata, Pune, Bangalore, other parts of Mumbai, we call them hub schools. So at some point, I want a group of students come together and start having these engagements. You can join a library together, you can have a small nature work together, but it's important for peer learning. It's very important you have peer learning as well. Okay, sir. That that is really interesting. So basically, you have one offline school and like maybe just for two to three uh, like for two classes a week maybe offline and yeah, that is that is really interesting. A hybrid model. And do you think this will continue like after COVID as well when everything like everything is calmed down a little bit? Correct. So uh, Aditya, I believe this is a new normal. We call it the digital, you know, physical and digital together. Uh, today, we've understood that the world can do much better by, by talking to each other. You know, you are in a very different city where I am. Your city is beautiful, by the way. But we are still interacting. Thomas Friedman said in his book, The World is Flat, that the flatter the world, the better the world becomes. Uh, we all worried about carbon emissions and travel. Today, I can speak to anybody if there's a conversation. You know, I was working in Moscow and I was also living in Dubai. We had to fly down to Moscow to do a physical meet, which would last for two hours. Now, imagine, I would always encourage my, my company, my, 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 you know, my directors, why can't I do a small online meeting? Today, I think it, I don't have to convince. I do a lot of consulting to schools in Dubai, in Singapore, in Bangalore. And I can sit here and I can do effectively. Of course, I would love to meet and, you know, you can't eat cake online. So I would love to go down. I'm, I'm a big party person we will do it but i also feel the online world is here to stay courses like harappa udemy coursera linkedin learning are real courses imperial college has started a course in london i worked with imperial college uh, on nanotechnology they have started a course on a, a course online uh, in the pandemic and it's it's on it's staying it is continuing okay sir um that is great but um okay Sir, can you also tell us about how technology is like, of course, you mentioned technology is very important, but uh, how technology is uh, playing a key role in changing the face of education and how can it continue to do that in the future? What are so your views I'm on technology in education? Okay. Yeah. I'm a big believer of two very fundamental things. One, technology is not a master, it's always a slave. It's a tough word to call Sophia the robot a slave. That's not what I intend. But technology is subservient to your emotions. Human beings will, we are emotional beings, you know, uh, stress, anger, happiness, joy. These are human emotions that even a caveman had, we'll also have it. So technology always improves our 
our well being technology helps us become better example two very important example in the pandemic i've learned is today online world has made education transparent isn't it you as a parent is so so if i was a teacher your parent could see how good or bad i am in the confined school nobody knew the only time you would know is when you do a ptm or you have an interaction on a report card today every poor teacher is exposed and and sorry about it but yes it is good a teacher who is not prepared well a teacher who doesn't have subject knowledge a teacher who's, whose language is not good if it was a language class teachers are being exposed and this is wonderful technology also is enabled you know you don't have to be physically here you can travel the world and you can still attend your school or a program wherever you are i keep saying it does not say that we can't meet we should meet but you can meet for dot lot of other reasons finland for example have drilled a, a, a data which says finland is by the way number one education country in pisa performance indicator for student assessment is a test for the world around and finland said today science and math stem can and should be taught online and i'm very proud it says language and sports is what is to be physical so you can do a lot of scientific experiments which are diy and technology will help us in that it'll only become better it'll only evolve more if we learn how to use technology effectively yes sir that is that is great so uh, i think technology is also i also think that technology uh, can play a very great part on educating children but it has to be in the right way and if uh, if the right way is cracked then yeah uh, it 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 will be a great tool for all the children around the world so can you tell us uh, like uh, how uh, like many new ventures such as white hat junior in india are developing these days which focus mainly on technology education for children specifically coding based what is your idea on this and do you think coding is a necessary skill for children uh in the development stage and please advise some pros and cons for the same okay uh, again white hat junior wonderful another good company uh, acquired by byju so all these are a positive trend uh, also you should remember and understand that everybody cannot do everything right coding is as important as arts is so let's say i love doodling and you love coding uh, should you do doodling course and should i do coding course not necessary right doodling is an art in itself i can animate i can do manga i can create graffitis i can do so many things by doodling so you can also put the doodle into a code and you can create a program around it so this is where we have to understand that everything is meant for a niche area uh, coding doodling and let's say sports should every child know it yes at, at some point you should know arts you should know a basic uh, computers and you should also be physically healthy right so you must know football but does it mean that you have to be the best in football you should like do two hours of practice every day no so parents you know what unfortunately parents are not able to make out the difference between noise and voice whoever makes the loudest noise gets coded right gets acquired gets the views so today cryptocurrency is the noise is it bad no but should everybody invest in cryptocurrency not at all so the same way white hat is doing a wonderful job so is is something else into arts so is a sports company and all of them have a space and a place for a student's life yes and sir can you tell us about uh, that that's that's really interesting but sir can you tell us uh, about your view on like uh, on your uh, uh, is online yeah so basically is online education cost effective for parents what is hub schooling case since there are many uh, many schools uh, i have seen that take a ridiculous amount of money for an online class which needs no infrastructure only teachers and yeah what is your view on that and what is hub schooling okay. case wonderful wonderful i think i'll i'll put it again into perspectives you know i'm an advocate for online learning but i'm the biggest critic also so yes online learning and online education is 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 a game changer in multiple ways number one the frills that came with it it has done away with you know it's transparent it is informative it is right there it is at your pace also it is cost effective the the hub schooling case what we provide 
you know, it at one fifth of a cost from a normal schooling. So let's say a normal school charges one lakh rupees for a full academic term, right? An average, uh, this is twenty thousand rupees for the whole year. Everything, including math, science, English, arts, life skills, business studies, computers, assessments, teacher training. So that is very important. So hub schooling or any other online education should be cost effective. Otherwise, you are not doing the game changing part. Because you know, in a school, you buy uniforms, you take transport, you have to buy your lunches. None of these are a cost here. Yes, I would rather tell a parent save money, buy a laptop instead of mobile phone, invest in good Wi Fi's. The infant is good headphones. These are good for your enhancement of learning. Now, uh, the the second part that you said is, does it mean that you know it's the same thing? It's just no infrastructure. So why is expensive? Uh, I have a very good uh, mentor who used to say, pay peanuts, get monkeys. So I believe your real money should go into your HR. Pay your teachers well. You know. we must sometimes we wonder that uh, why should not a teacher be paid as much as a as a artificial intelligence data uh, guy in some in some uh, you know software company that is what i work on teachers must be paid very well and this will only happen if people start believing in the power of online schooling programs like golden sparrow hub schooling they need the backing up and the trust of of investors of parents of the general public and then we can actually pay our teachers well just adding a small caveat uh, why is finland so good is in finland teachers are respected so you see holdings of film stars or cricketers in india selling insurances and 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 maldives vacation in finland you have teachers pictures teachers have a card called privilege card if they are in a queue they can use the card and they can bypass the queue if they are in a public transport they get to you know they get to sit because they will be standing and teaching the students i think we need to start respecting our teachers and you will find a paradigm shift in education yes sir sir can you can you tell us about uh, like what is the student selection or admission criteria like for 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 your channel cha cha uh, school From schooling right yes. so it's it's simple uh, any student who wishes to study the academic school uh, like a normal school that you will go to some of the good schools hub schooling is an alternate schooling itself so you go to your re- regular classes 1 2 3 4 till 10 this is how you are uh, there is a small interview if the student has not reached the level or if the student have a previous certificate that is good enough and then the teachers assess the child so we are not judgmental teachers assess the child during the class that's one very important aspect number 2 we follow the cambridge learning outcomes till grade 8 and 9th and 10th we go for the national institute of open schooling it's a government of india aggregated board so we i always say your your boards are your milestones not your destinations you know i topped my school in in uh, vivekananda kendra vidyalaya cbsc in my 10th did it change anything about what i thought in my higher studies no you know the numbers were only a reflection of how much i worked or what my tuition teachers taught me then i realized 10th is not a landmark the way we consider it right 10th is a milestone can i cross the milestone successfully is very important so that is the schooling that we've got we've got good number of students appearing now believing in the power of online education at a fraction of a cost with some wonderful teachers yes sir sir uh, that is really great so as you said uh, you mentioned till 10th so sir uh, your your school goes like till 12th grade or uh, like um, is it a middle I've school got, high school yeah so i've got students for 12th student 12th graders but we only want to do till 10th i because nis itself is a as a board is people are unaware of you know there are a lot of myths and stereotype associated oh nis is for specially gifted nis for slow learners no i you know i thought nis is a brilliant thing dipika padukone and sachin tendulkar are nis students you know you know i feel proud when you say that because the iit topper from tamil nadu is an nis student so i want my students to the grade 10 they're 16 years old i want them after all the skills and after all the you know the 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 wisdom we gave them i want them to go and face the outside world and prove that this is valuable so yes we are till we are k10 and i want the students to go to the best colleges after 10th okay sir so 
so basically all all grid any any person can join that that's that's really reassuring so um what is uh, what is your view on making education cost effective for all and how will it affect society yes. and consider the case of khan academy like which is which is an online school type of thing which makes education free for all wonderful uh, that would be the best and most beautiful democratic dream of education uh, and I, I you know i follow some of my educationists who i really admire sir ken robinson uh, who passed away in the pandemic uh, professor sugata mitra another amazing uh, ted talk winner so i believe what dr sugata mitra said very nicely uh, the hole in the wall experiment education and clouds we need to today anybody even remotely have an access to a mobile phone probably today the data is is the new you know uh, the new currency education can become transparent democratic and and widespread using online education today the best teachers wherever they are you know it does not have to be in mumbai alone your best teacher could be sitting in darjeeling the lovely hills of darjeeling sipping her tea can she teach a larger section of audience number 1 number 2 also the amount of programs we've got it's cluttered can we have good education where we limit the number of students in an online class 60 is not not online learning right it is just filling classrooms can we small make it small compartments can there will be individualized learning very very pro, pro, progressive and that's the way we can take it forward yes sir so um so that uh, you have mentioned so many things and yeah so um when is like uh, if if someone wants to opt for online schooling and is not from bombay or maybe uh, is from another state can he join the online classes or is it like just limited to bombay uh, the whole purpose of online would defeat it if they can't join from anywhere isn't it so yes. absolutely uh, you know i've got students from chennai i've got students from from bangalore kolkata uh, delhi and mumbai of course but also i've got students from singapore and from saudi arabia uh, vastly different regions right the only thing i do for them is you know someone in saudi if my class starts at 10 am in india for them it would be 7:30 am in the morning so when we can create new batches uh while i didn't start a new batch for them but at some point that's the whole idea of hub you have a hub of 10 students there you start a batch across and, and one beautiful thing we do in hub golden sphere hub schooling is we don't have class names you could be in class 1 but you can sit together and learn gravity with a class 5 student also also each classes are named after some personalities so we've got tagore and lincoln and edison and faraday curie so the idea is you are belonging to a small group of peers learning together rather than class 1 2 3 this caste system of classes also should do away in a school education yes sir so that is that is really interesting people from around the globe uh, and um, around the country that that will make a really interesting class so um so what is your vision for hub schooling what do you think hub schooling is going to be in the next 10 years all right so i plan very short term and i plan one academic term to another but i dream of hubs across i dream that golden sparrow you know spreads like a small bird we revive the idea of this lovely mentor learning uh, of course i i admire khan academy and what i want to add like a khan academy plus is mentors i don't want self paced videos to be the new norm that's not how learning happens you need you know that's what i said gurukul you need a uh, dronacharya to to have arjuns around you need a mentor who can guide you answer your questions and facebook and instagram are not the mentors aditya so that's my dream of golden sphere hub schooling we spread the wings we have some wonderful team of mentors and teachers and students from across the world language across demographics can sit and learn together yes sir um that that's great and uh, i i i look forward to seeing that in the future sir um there are many pros and cons of online education i had a uh, debate on this earlier on on doordarshan the national tele- television with oh. uh, with many several other children it will be good to know your views as to where uh, edu- online education misses something 
which you did not miss in the conventional system during your schooling absolutely so as i said i'm the biggest proponent and the biggest critic also i wrote two blogs aditya one telling why online education should be wonderful and one telling what are the challenge and perils of online education isn't it so online education is the norm also i believe you cannot just be online so if a child decides that you are 4 hours in the morning online and that's education i said that's a very sad way of thinking i want the child to utilize the evening time or whatever time they've got for playing a sport it could be badminton it could be just doing your running it could be also joining a library and being a part of a reading club so this is what online education will give you it'll give you space it'll give you financial freedom and it will give you the time to pursue your other hobbies from having a pet a gardening working at an ngo a community center joining a book club a sports health regime this or joining in a company as an apprentice which i strongly recommend to do so this is a new normal aditya online education is here to stay but so is the physical relationship peer learning mentoring very important yes sir um can you tell us uh, that that's that's really interesting and so i think uh, with this uh, online education i i have i have been in favor of, of it also but i think there are some issues like human connection building the relationships people management skills discipline and physical activities like all of these suffer a lot i myself have been suffering like because of these things but uh, is there any way we can try to fill these gaps in the future and how absolutely i can i always say that i can't shake hands online the day i do it it's it's a new world isn't it but these are your limitations with technology gives you and i said technology should be a good enabler it you don't expect technology to give you all and complete solution you still have to have physical connections still have to bond which is what hub schooling does hub schooling says there are so many friends around you in your neighborhood find them and when you find them you may go to different school but you have a connect in the evening start a common program together feeding the animal a library a walk together playing in the park and these i absolutely endorse what you say aditya is not it's the missing piece of puzzle in the online education that we have to be the answer uh, you know it, it's like with the climate change the climate change cannot be effective if you sit in your homes and give lectures or make youtube videos you need to get up and take action it could be switching off the air condition it could be using less cars it could be going out and planting trees so many small things or not using plastic this is what the world is the world needs theory world needs learning world also needs implementing an action yes sir so uh, sir can you tell us uh, sir if any of our viewers are interested in joining hub schooling from anywhere throughout india maybe globally um how can they con- uh, contact you oh i'm always accessible my my you know facebook or linkedin post are there you can drop me a message there you can whatsapp me the number you can share it in the link or my email daudv at gmail.com an easier one so it's d a w o o d v for victory at gmail.com you know it's 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 easy to reach out to somebody if you really want to and i'll be more than happy uh, i do a lot of these promotional awareness webinars a part of the panel talk about it it's also a concept that needs to be told it not necessarily everybody need to join but everybody need to join the conversation around the online schooling i hope golden sparrow hub schooling can solve one little part of the education you know journey and we create a world which is much better more transparent democratic education yes sir and uh, that thank you uh, and with this uh, that uh, this wraps up uh, our second session and my viewers i think uh, I hope you learned a lot about hub schooling and what it can do in the future. If you're interested, just uh, see the description below and you'll find all the links. And don't forget to subscribe. And thank you, sir, for coming on our show. And see you next weekend. Bye. Thank you.